Okay, we're back. I went ahead and finished the foreground in the greens and yellows and a little bit of brown. And now we're going to do kind of a sunset sky. And for that, we're going to use blues and a little bit of purple. So I'm going to go ahead and dip my brush in water and go ahead and get the caked watercolor ready. Just go ahead and start brushing the sky in. I think I talked about it a little bit before, but really the main idea of this project is the artistic... Um, I'm going to start again. I think I talked about it before, but one of the concepts that we're really trying to learn about here is resist. And there's lots of different ways artists use resist, whether they're doing it in fabric with wax, where they apply wax to fabric and then put dye over it, and the wax is then taken off and the white shows through, and that's called batiking. Um, there's this where you can use either glue or this cool removable tape roller adhesive um, to do uh, resist. It's just something that artists have been using for hundreds if not thousands of years to create designs uh, in kind of an unusual and fun way. I really like working with resist and I hope you'll like it too because the effect is so cool. So I'm gonna keep working. I like to just switch from color to color not just paint uh, the whole thing the same color blue, especially because um, we're working blues kind of at the top and then at the bottom I'm going to switch to purples and so it gives it a sunset effect. And I think that's going to look great. You'll notice as you start going over the um, adhesive that we've put down, it will not accept the color. It kind of beads up on it and that's exactly what we want it to do. So it is doing its job. You can experiment with how much water you like versus how much paint. Some people like it lighter. Some people like more pigment in their watercolor. It's really just what you like. But if you notice, I'm taking my time. I'm not rushing. And I'm using careful brush strokes back and forth. I'm not going this way and then going that way makes such a difference in your painting if you do your brush strokes all the same direction. And not straight back and forth because we're trying to do a sky and thinking about clouds and how it kind of undulates back and forth. So the same direction, but not necessarily a straight line right across. So, okay, I've added some blues. Want to switch to maybe, what other kind of blues? Just kind of a bluish green. Let's see how that looks. Ooh, that's cool. That's like a turquoise, one of my favorite colors. But I have to admit, I have kind of a different favorite color every week. When I'm teaching all the kids, I'll ask, what's your favorite color, Miss Bolin? And I'll say, this week, it's purple. It's hard to pick just one. Okay, so we're getting this sky in. It gets a little tricky when you get to the adhesive. You just paint right over it. You don't have to worry about trying to paint around it because... Oops. Let's see, I added a little green to that. Don't be afraid to experiment. Doesn't always, your painting doesn't always have to be about the final product. Lots of times I'll paint just for fun, just to try out new techniques. And sometimes they're not something I'd like to keep. Sometimes it's just about the process. And sometimes it turns out fantastic and I'm really excited about the results and it turns out about the product and something I'd like to share with people that I care about. So just have fun. It's all about having fun trying new things. Okay, so we did the horizon line. I'm painting over that as well, and hopefully that will give us 
a white line of separation so that we can clearly tell the background from the foreground. So we will just have to hope that that works. Okay. Oops, I forgot we were going to add some purple at the bottom. No problem. We can go right over, which is one of the cool things about watercolor. Add some purple. Come over here, do our purple. I'm speeding up a little bit because I don't want to take too much time, but I know that when you're doing this at home, you're going to be really taking your time and doing your best work, putting forth your best effort. Okay. Okay, we're almost done with our beautiful sunset sky. And now, it was really hard to see it on um, the white paper, but it's really starting to show where we put our, our white trees because the watercolor is not sticking to it. The other thing that I really recommend is not having a strip of color, a strip of color, a strip of color. What you want to do is if you find that that's happening, just add a little water so that you can blend them together. It makes it look more natural and more like the sunsets that we really do see in the sky. It's never really quite like stripes. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with this. So what we need to do now is you have to let it dry absolutely completely. And then I will show you, once it's dry, I'm going to show you how we are going to rub off the adhesive and how we're going to make them look like birch trees. So I'll see you in just a minute. Hi, I'm Miss Folan and we're back. So as you know, we painted our foreground, we did our background, and here comes the fun part because we are going to attempt to rub off the uh, roller bond adhesive. So here we go. You just take your finger and you rub it off. Yay, it's working. I'm excited. Hold it down. And look, any of the watercolor that got on top is no longer there, and we have our white canvas underneath. You can just kind of roll it. Peel it off. Make yourself a collection of these. So that's our first tree. Oh, we also have to do our horizon lines. So don't forget to do that. exciting when something like this works and you get to see what resist is all about. This tree I did in the back turned out a little funky, but I think once we add the birch bark parts to it, it'll be cool. Okay, this one had a lot of adhesive on it, so it's going to take a little bit of elbow grease. good if you can get every bit of the adhesive off. It just makes it cleaner. So yes, they do come off and you can make these cool little balls, but you are not allowed to fling them at your friends or your siblings. I do not recommend that. Okay, we have the adhesive off and now you can see that it's once again back to the white canvas. I think it looks great. 
The final step is to make them look like birch trees. And what I recommend for that is using any kind of fine tipped black marker. And you need to come in. Birch trees have, um, I was talking before about the bark that they have. It peels off very easily and there's these kind of black lines, almost stripes, not that go completely across, but little black stripes on the side. So I'm gonna show you how I make it look like that. And you may have your own way because remember, yours is not gonna look exactly like mine, that's fine. I don't want yours to look exactly like mine. I want your artwork to look like your artwork. So I'm gonna start on this one. I'm gonna start on the side, using the side of it, and just kind of come in and make some different sized lines. We want to have variation. Some of them come further across than others. And already, and then make sure you come across back on the other side. This is also helping to make this tree look rounded so it doesn't look quite as uh, two-dimensional. We want to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. So it's coming back across different shapes, not different shapes, but different size lines. We want a lot of variation coming across. This needs to be done carefully. I'm just speeding up a little bit for time's sake. Now, remember that we have the horizon line and that these trees are in front of it. So don't leave, make sure that you continue with your black lines in front of that white horizon line so that we can show that these are in the foreground. These are coming in front of our hill in the back. You go all the way up onto the branches as well because they have the same bark, of course. So do this, doing it a little too quickly. But hopefully you're getting the idea. Okay, so that's one done. This one in the background. Do the same thing. Different size lines. Remember, we made this one smaller because it's further away. That's called perspective, and it's something that um, artists use to show distance. And then, of course, we do the same on the other side. And I am so happy that you are trying this project. I think you're going to be really pleased with it. It's got so many beautiful colors in it. And I like the fact that there's colors in the background, and then there are these stark black and white trees in the front. It just makes it um, a really vibrant and really interesting painting. So thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. And check out some of my other free art lessons. I'm Lindsay Volan, Miss Volan, your art teacher, and I'll see you again next time.